The title of the message this morning is Psalm 91. I actually came up with that title myself. <laughs> Psalm 91. Now, let me start by saying that there are some psalms that seem to stand out more than others. Have you ever noticed that? I mean, there are lots of psalms in the Bible, 150 psalms in the book of Psalms. And there's some of them where a phrase or two begins to mention, immediately you know about that Psalm. There's other Psalms that we don't spend as much time on. And some of them almost seem to be like classic Psalms. Perhaps Psalm 91 is one of those, but I certainly believe that it is one that stands out more than others. And some of these prominent psalms have even been given names or descriptions. For example, Psalm 107 is known as the Traveler's Psalm. Another psalm, 121, is the Reassuring Psalm. This is where it speaks about the Lord is my keeper. Psalm 23, how many of you love that psalm? Oh, wow. That is a fantastic psalm. It's known as the most beautiful psalm, probably by far the most popular, the most read, the most well-known psalm in the entire book of Psalms. It is a beautiful psalm. Now, I'm not really aware if there is a particular name that has been attributed to Psalm 91, but it certainly, it has a powerful tone of trust as a theme. It has a powerful thread through the psalm of trust, obviously trusting in God. And Psalm 91 has been memorized by so many Christians, countless Christians over the ages. Psalm 91 has been claimed by generation after generation. Very possibly some of your uh, forefathers, your grandparents or something would have claimed this psalm, and it's perhaps even precious in your family. And it has been a source of great strength and encouragement to the believers. And I believe that by the working of the Spirit through the message today, I'm trusting God that it will be a source of great strength to you and encouragement to you today. 
But also, I just think to myself, praise God for this psalm. You know, sometimes we can almost take for granted the beautiful word of God that God has given us. But praise God for this psalm. Can you say amen? amen. So let's take a look at it. Psalm 91, I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it is verse 1 through to verse 16. If you do have your Bible, follow in your Bible. If you don't, then you can have a look on the screen. It says, He who dwells. These first two verses are very important. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers. Isn't that lovely? And under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. A buckler, that is an unusual word, not exactly known what it's meant, but most would agree it refers to covering armor. So God is your shield and he is your covering armor. Verse 5, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold, shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. On to verse nine. Because you, have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. Notice that word dwelling. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he does this wonderful thing. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot because, look at this, he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Knowing the name of God is equivalent to knowing the character of God. And God says that I will set him on high because he's known my character. He has known my name. Verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The Lord bless the reading of his holy word. I want to remind you that Psalm 91 is there for you to learn, to take hold of, to claim to memorize, to stand on, it is there for you. Now, there are three things that I'd like to say to you this morning about this psalm, this passage of Scripture. Number one, stay positioned in the secret place and keep your trust firmly in Him. Please say that out aloud with me. Stay positioned in the secret place and keep your trust firmly in Him. Just look once again at those first two verses. It's on your screen. Verse one and two, it says, he who dwells, please say the word dwells. That is a focal point of this passage today. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And look at this. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Now, I want to ask, what are you saying about God? Because the declaration of your mouth is important. Are you saying negative things about, oh, it's, it's been like this and it's been the next thing and so on? 
I want to tell you, you need to begin to declare what the Word of God says. And the Word of God says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. Some of us are saying the wrong things. I want to remind you that you are a prophet over your own life. And there's nothing as powerful as taking the Word of God and speaking that over your life and you to begin to declare, it doesn't matter how miserable I feel, it doesn't matter whether I'm feeling depressed, it doesn't matter whether there's no vine that is bearing fruit or the olive tree is not giving olives, etc. yet will I rejoice in the Lord. And I will say about my God that He is my refuge. So what are you saying? Come on, what are you saying? I want to encourage you, the confession of your mouth is important. It needs to be in agreement with the Word of God. And that's how He makes you scale the heights. Because your, the hind, the front feet and the back feet go into the same place. And with your mouth, confession is made, those front feet. And with your heart, you believe those back feet. And that's how you get to scale the heights. That was for free, by the way. <laughs> now, the wonderful promises that are found in the psalm are dependent upon two conditions being met. And these conditions are laid out in the first two verses. And namely, the one condition is dwell in the secret place. It's a condition. And another condition is affirm that God is your refuge and your fortress and, and you trust in Him. This is really, in the scope of these 16 verses, these are two factors that you and I need to make sure that we have in place. Now, he who dwells in the secret. Yes, when we come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, we are in Christ, and our life is hidden in him. And you're not going to be snatched out of that place or anything like that, because God says, none will snatch you out of my hand. But let me tell you, I believe that this is about, in our hearts, drawing closer to God and setting our affection on Him and not being distant from Him. So these two conditions are essentially dwell and affirm. Dwell in, place yourself in that relationship with God, in the presence of God, and also affirm and declare, yes, He's my refuge, I trust in Him. And people look at you and they look at your life and they know that this is your confession. Yes, I affirm, I dwell in God, I trust in Him. And then you can look forward to the blessings that flow out of this. Now, the Hebrew word for dwell is a word which is pronounced yashab. Yashab essentially means some of the following. So dwell, yashab, means to sit down, to remain, to settle down, to abide, to inhabit and to situate yourself. And folks, this is where you and I need to be in our relationship with God, that we sit in that relationship with God. We position ourselves in that. We abide in that relationship. We inhabit that relationship. We situate and place ourselves in the dwelling place with God. And if you think it's hard and difficult, I believe it's not. Young children can do that. Just place yourself in a close proximity to God, in your heart, positionally you there. But in your heart, you need to draw close to God. And listen to the statement, God does not want a distant relationship with you. He wants you to be close to Him. And so this aspect of dwelling I'd like to say to you, it's very important. It's very important. We need to learn to dwell with Him. And actually, I pray, oh God, for myself and for us as a body, would you please help us, Lord, to dwell with you in an even greater way, living in the awareness of our closeness with God. I like to put it this way, that we need to cultivate closeness. Yes, Jesus had 12 disciples, but there were three of them, Peter, James, and John, who cultivated closeness. And I don't want to be somebody who's on the periphery. I want to be somebody who's cultivating closeness with the Lord. So it's interesting to note that the first two verses of Psalm 91 are actually describing where you are placed. They are actually describing your 
position, a position that you and I need to keep ourselves in, and it's a position of living in God, a position of resting in God, or perhaps you could say a position of trusting in God. And that reminds me of Acts 17, verse 28, and it says, in Him we live and move and have our being. In Him we dwell. And we enjoy the secret place of the Most High. Now, in verse 9 and 14, we find uh, two important statements that begin with the word because. And I think that they are worth particularly noting. Uh, In verse 9 and 10, it says, Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Because of what? Because you have made the Lord your dwelling. Isn't that beautiful? You make the Lord your dwelling, and there's a promise. You will be rewarded for living in that way. God says he promises you that you will be kept safe. Another scripture which also has this because statement is verse 14. It's on your screen. It says, because he has set his love. Those three words, please say that with me. Set his love. One more time. Set his love. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I actually find those words very beautiful. Such a lovely statement, because he has said his love. And so, because of what? Because there's something that the child of God has done here. And he has set his or her affection on the Lord. Let me tell you, there's lots of things that are competing for your affection. God is, according to Scripture, he is a jealous God. He wants the affection of your heart. I've discovered God does not want to take second place. That's why he says, seek me first. And I'll add all these things. I will deliver you. I'll add the food and the provision, the clothing, the finances that you need. God is wanting that place where we dwell in with him, where we seek after him, where he is the apple of our eye. Now, let me say part of experiencing the blessings that are listed in Psalm 91 is that we need to keep trusting in the Lord. Why don't you tell the person next to you, keep trusting. Tell them that. (laughs) Keep trusting. Now, you might be here today and you've been through some things recently where you have been shaken. Maybe something's happened where your faith has been shaken and your trust in God has been shaken. And I wanna say to you, if that's the case, that you're facing that today, that things have been really rocked and shaken, I want to encourage you to not cast away your confidence. Please don't do that. Don't cast away your confidence. Because if there's one thing that I know, and this I can honestly say, I know that I know that I know that I know, I know that God is faithful. Nobody can tell me any other way because I know it. I've seen it experientially in my own life. God is faithful. You are sitting in his faithfulness right here. And he is faithful. And it says in Hebrews 10 verse 35, so do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. So that's number one. Stay positioned in the secret place and keep your Trust firmly in Him. It's about dwelling and affirming. Dwelling and affirming your trust in Him. Number two, the evils that God will deliver us from as we trust in Him. Please say this with me. The evils that God will deliver us from as we trust in you, in Him. Do you remember that He is your deliverer? It's not a term that we maybe often hear. But I want to say it clearly today. God is your deliverer. Now, in verses 3 to 8, we see various types of evil that God can and will deliver you from. And let's try to gain a better understanding of these aspects. God will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Now, that is quite an old-fashioned terminology. 
It's not like you go walk into Macro and say, can I have one snare of the fowler? <laughs> it's old terminology. The snare of the fowler is uh, the trapper of birds. Fowl has to do with birds. So this is the trap of the hunter. God is saying that I will deliver you from the trap of the hunter. And this signifies hidden dangers that can unexpectedly catch us. Generally speaking, traps are hidden. <laughs> Nobody puts a trap out in the open and says a sign that says trap here. No, if you imagine in the forest and so on, they're trying to trap a young buck or something, and uh, the hunters, they might put out a trap which is covered with leaves so that by the element of surprise, hiddenness and surprise, all of a sudden that buck steps on that and is caught. And so God is saying that he will even deliver you from the hidden thing. You don't even know they're out there. You might be going into this week and there is a hidden trap that the enemy has set for you. And God says, don't worry about it. I've got you in my care. Even that hidden trap that I will be faithful to deliver you from that. 